This is also a motor which you've seen in the lab. Okay, a stepper motor is sort of a hybrid between a DC motor and a servo motor. It's hybrid because it does position control, but in steps like 10 degrees, 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, but then it does that in an open loop fashion like a DC motor. So it's, it does position control like servo motor, but it does it in an open loop fashion like a DC motor, brushless or a brush DC motor. Okay, so they said no without feedback, no sensors are needed, so they can be cheap. They can achieve position control. Uh, there are no wires to the rotor, hence no need for brushes, which is nice because brushes wear out. They can generate large torques at low speeds. This is one of the limitations of DC motors. They, uh, they, they are limited to the amount of torque they can generate. Now there are three types. There is a permanent magnet stepper motor, a variable reluctance motor, and then the hybrid. So in a permanent magnet motor, uh, the rotor has permanent magnet, no teeth, reluctance motor, non-magnetized soft core. So it uses you know, windings instead of a uh, magnet, nasty, then then if you take the two together, you will have a hybrid motor. Uh, and then depending on the characteristics, you can choose one of them. I don't want to get too much details of that. Yeah. I think what's in interesting is since you've tried to move a stepper motor, it's interesting to understand how a stepper motor actually works. Um, now I'm going to explain this with a two-phase permanent magnet stepper motor. Okay, right, two-phase because there are two phases, wires, and then there is a magnet. Okay, now you know, you'll see that this has limitations. It will only rotate by, uh, it only rotated in steps of 22.5 degrees. So one to two, two to three, and so on. So it's not going to give you a very fine resolution. If you want a higher resolution, you need to use a motor with many more phases. Okay, but for explanation, let's just stick to a two-phase permanent magnet motor. Okay, it has two separate coils, as you can see. Uh, coil one starts over here, goes all the way there, comes back, and then coil two goes like this, comes back. So two separate coil windings. It has four pole, uh, yeah, two poles per phase. Because each phase produces a theoretical north south, it's two poles per phase, and it has one magnet. So this is the moving part. And that's the stator. Okay, now we'll talk about how do you drive these in steps. There are, well, we have uh, four methods. Okay, and I think they're best illustrated with these figures. Okay, wave drive, full stepping, half stepping, and micro stepping. Let's look at wave drive explained with a two phase motor. Okay, so as I said, there are two coils, A or two phases, phase one and phase two. And you can basically turn them on and off. So phase one, this is just turning phase one on. So when I said two poles per phase, when you have a wire carrying current, it actually produces a north south with it because a current in a wire produces a magnetic, its own magnetic field. And that's where the north and south comes from. This is like from, I forget the physics, physics uh, law which comes from, but a, magnet, uh, a wire carrying current will actually lead to a magnetic field. So let's assume that there's a north and south produced. And let's say that initially the rotor is in this configuration, south is up, north is down. Okay, what you expect is that uh, it, nothing will move here because north is attracted to south, this north down is attracted to south, nothing happens. But now what you do is you turn phase B on such a way that there's a north pole here and south pole there, okay? And you turn the A off. So what that will lead to is this south, which was there uh, earlier up, will now get attracted to this north pole. And so it'll actually rotate by 90 degrees clockwise. Okay, so you do the same thing with A now, you reverse the, where the current passes is sort of going from A to, from one way you do it the other way, and then you have a north pole down and south pole up, which means this south pole will get attracted to this north pole. So it'll turn another 90 degrees, and then another 90 degrees. So this one basically turns 90 degrees in steps, okay? So clockwise, counterclockwise, you can reverse the logic to get counterclockwise. I said 90 degrees in steps. These are positions one, three, five, seven, and nine. Okay. 
uh, one of the problems with this motor is the following. At any time, you only one phase is on, either A or B, which means that the motor torque produced is half of what it can actually produce. If both these phases are on, then you'll have torque T, but if only one of them is on, then you'll have half the torque. So you only get 50% uh, you only get 50% of the net torque, which is bad. It's not, you're not really fully using the capabilities of this motor. So this is where you go to full stepping. Okay, here you can see that all the coils are on all the time. Just that what differs is how they are turned on. So initially this is north, south, north, south. So here you have two nodes, and then this south is going to be in between. It's not going to lean towards any north because there'll be an equal force pulling it in either direction. Now what is done is phase A is switched. It's switched from, it's switched from being north pole to being south pole. So now what happens is there are two north poles up and to the right, which means this south pole is going to end up in position four. And then you keep doing this kind of thing and you'll have it rotating uh, to position six, position eight. So it goes to position two, four, six, eight. Uh, in 90 degrees rotation, we still have 90 degrees. We don't cannot got 45 degrees, which would be nice. But the advantage is we use the full torque. Both the phases are on, which means full torque is achieved. Okay. Okay. So now the question is, we want to be able to turn more than 90 degrees, well, less than 90 degrees, right? What is the use of motor which only turns 90 degrees? So if you want to go for 45 degrees turning, then you can adopt this strategy where you could turn. A on and then A and B on. So now what you'll see is that it goes from position one to position two because the pole is, the magnet is, is turning based on uh, how, what is the net field produced by these phases. So one to two, to three to four to five and so on. So this moves in steps of 45 degrees. But one of the disadvantages of the setup is that you either have one, phase on or two phase on. So it switches between 50 degrees talk and 100 degrees talk, 100 percent talk. So you, that's not like a, a good thing because now the talk is not going to be constant. Okay, so this means that we can actually do something about it. We can actually have a four phase 45 degree turn. So this one will use now uh, it'll have to use uh, it'll use both coils but it will have to uh, turn both of them on. So you need more circuitry to turn this on. So this one written in steps of 45 degrees, again, because the way they are fired goes from one, something is not right. Yeah, this is also going 90 degrees. I think I got the wrong figure. Okay, let me, let me fix this. This is, this is not uh, going to give you 45 degrees rotation. It's only going to give you 90 degrees rotation. Uh, the way you turn, you go 45 degrees is you need to introduce more circuitry. You need to have more phases. And that way you can uh, add this. I'll, I'll fix this. This is incorrect. I have to fix this. I'll change it in the notes. Okay, so all the phases you've seen either go uh, 90 or 45, but really what you want is to go maybe five degrees or 10 degrees increments. So one way of doing this is to introduce more phases, like put, instead of having two phases, which gives you 90 degrees, have 10 phases. So now you'll get uh, 10 times more resolution. Okay, but that's not practical, right? You need to increase the circuitry, you need to increase the wiring. So what people do is, instead of changing the Instead of adding more wires, what they do is, remember this was just turning the phases on and off, full voltage or zero voltage, right? So full voltage, when, uh, when they were on, it was full voltage, when it was off, zero voltage. But you can have a circuitry which actually varies the voltage from zero to V. So by varying the voltage from, by not going zero to V, but zero to 50 V, you can get twice as much resolution. So you can go maybe 10% or 15% and that way you can get it to step over a, over an angle. So here you can see that the current is actually not 
going zero to max, but it's, go, it's varying in steps, which means that you will see that the stepper actually turns in discrete increments. Okay, there are the torque speed curve of the motor is slightly different from a DC motor. It's parabolic, like you can see over here. Okay, there's a range where you can start stops so anywhere in this range. You can quickly stop the motor. However, if it goes too fast, its speed it goes a little bit higher than in this range, the one on the right. This range, it will actually not, uh, it'll actually go kind of fast that you cannot quickly stop it. So what you need to do is, in order to stop it, you need to go from slewing region to the start stop region and then slow it down. So there's a problem with this motor that is, at certain speeds, they don't slow down and they don't stop. You need to slow them down to a certain speed before they can come to a stop. Okay, so that's like the tricky part of a stepper motor. But if you use it for position control in slow speed mode, then you have no problem with any of these things. 